It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, and we're joined today by the Honorable Mark Molinaro from New York. Great to see you. Glad to be with you. Thanks very much. Okay, so we've had the opportunity to talk all oh, a few times yeah. uh, since you've come to Congress, um, but still fairly new around here, right? I, I'm uh, well into my second year, but my first term, I will say the uh, the last 18 months have felt more like 18 years, but nevertheless, uh, still, uh, still a new member. What is one of the biggest challenges to coming to Congress? I mean, uh, many will sit back home and say, well, if I was there, <laughs> I'd do this. Yeah. Um, but what, what are some of the challenges? So I once served as a state legislator, uh, and uh, being able to get people who disagree to agree, and being able to get people who don't see your priorities uh, as their priorities is always the biggest challenge. Now, I did spend the last 12 years as an executive, county executive in my home county, uh, and um, I did have to switch my, my uh, executive hat to legislative hat back after I got here, and it didn't take a couple months to kind of make that transition. But I think that's the challenge, right? I tell people, I was just with a class of uh, high school students yesterday, I tell people, you know, I, I, my wife and I agree on lots of things, but when we disagree, it's hard to come to agreement. There are 435 of us here forced into marriage, and uh, we have to try to get folks who don't see the world exactly the way we do to agree on a number of issues. You know, we're going to talk about the Farm Bill and the specifics of that Farm Bill. Getting uh, Republican and Democrat members to agree uh, with some of the priorities we have and some of the challenges that farmers and families face, that's a, that's a challenge. So you got to negotiate, you got to work, and you got to build relationships. Normally, that House Ag Committee is one of the most bipartisan, really split more on a regional basis yes. than a party basis. Um, but markup set to begin. Yeah. Oh. Been a long time coming here as well. What do you see when you, you start looking at that radar? Sure. So, I mean, the 2024 Farm Bill, finally, uh, we're you know in a position to, to mark it up and, and we'll vote on it in committee. A uh, long time coming. Uh, worked, uh, I, I know uh, my colleagues and I worked very hard to bring it to, uh, to this place. But the 2024 Farm Bill uh, includes uh, uh, increases in relief to family farmers. It includes increases to SNAP benefits and, and access to SNAP benefits. Uh, and for me, it, it includes uh, priorities for upstate farmers. Uh, New York farmers face some of the most unique challenges, uh, some of which are natural, uh, right, topography and geography. Uh, some of it is climate and uh, uh, weather conditions. A lot of it is regulation. Uh, New York is heavily regulated. And so, um, you know, my farmers have a unique voice that needs to be, uh, needs to be expressed and, 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 and supported. And so for me, uh, to, to your point, you know, the, the bill as it's crafted should have bipartisan support. Uh, we just live in a time where, you know, that isn't always uh, uh, easy to achieve. Um, but as the second most bipartisan member of Congress, <laughs> I'm not giving up just yet. And so we're working across the aisle and with my colleagues, hopefully to get this bill across the uh, finish line in committee. Uh, but it does have meaningful relief for, for farmers, uh, for families who struggle, uh, and for communities like mine. Okay. Uh, we we look up, especially in that, that Rome, Utica yeah. uh, area of New York, and that's heavy dairy area. But we're losing dairies as well. So there are multiple challenges yeah. here. Dairy margin protection, will that be helpful for New sure. York State? Dairyman? Well, the short answer is yes. Uh, thankfully, this bill includes a provision I wrote, uh, which would uh, not only expand access and the and the amounts that we're able to uh, protect and provide in dairy margin coverage, but also mandates regular update of the data that's used. Right now, it's actually codified. I don't know, 2015, and so that more uh, current data allows for, for better, uh, a stronger safety net uh, for dairy farmers. Um, for us, though, uh, uh, since uh, Utica and Rome is a little bit outside the 19th Congressional District, all of uh, uh, really this, the, my district is, is farmland. I mean, we have certainly villages and city centers, but we, our largest industry is agriculture. Dairy remains uh, a lar uh, the largest sector, um, one of the largest sectors of that, uh, of that agriculture industry. So whether it's Endicott and uh, Binghamton, uh, or uh, Delaware County and Hancock and, and other communities, uh, we know the value and the struggle that dairy farmers have. Now, we have an added burden in, in, in upstate New York. We, we not only have the regulation and the cost pro uh, prohibitions and the access to market uh, as well, 
Uh, New York, by the way, bans whole milk sales in schools, uh, flavored milk sales in schools. Thankfully, the farm bill, uh, this farm bill includes our provision to again make clear that whole and flavored milk should be sold in schools. But we also have the, da the, the downward, downstate upward pressure. So we have downstate moving up. And as they do, there's a lot more pressure on, on farmers uh, to sell, to subdivide, and the cost of living continues to rise. So dairy margin coverage is, is really important to these farmers. Uh, and I'm just happy that the bill includes the language that, uh, that we wrote. We talk about a farm bill. It's called a farm bill. You'd think, well, that's for farmers, yeah. right? And ranchers and dairymen and uh, those in, in uh, other aspects of ag. Yeah. But really, the biggest chunk of that is in nutrition. Let's sure. talk SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. What are you watching there? Yeah, so I, you know, I grew up on food stamps. Uh, if it was not for SNAP, although then it was just food stamps. Uh, and supported lunches. I don't know that my mom would have uh, gained the independence ultimately that she achieved. And uh, I know the value of the program. This uh, farm bill increases SNAP benefits, plain and simple. Uh, we take uh, the growth that's already uh, embedded in the program and we apply uh, inflation moving forward. And so therefore, uh, SNAP benefits grow. I'm also very happy that the bill includes uh, a bill that I wrote, uh, which would, uh, in language that I wrote, which would expand access to SNAP for families with individuals uh, who are living with disabilities. Right now, uh, you top out at 17. At 17 years of age, you, 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 uh, you, you cap the access to SNAP benefits. Uh, we've increased that now to 21. Why 21? Uh, because those with disabilities uh, can remain in school until they're 21. So if they remain in the home, they remain in school, they're doing some work, uh, we don't want families to be cut off. And so uh, this bill not only expands uh, uh, SNAP benefits, it expands access. It also expands uh, capacity to fund and support food banks and the connection that food banks have with, with communities that struggle. So it's a, uh, it's a good balance uh, and uh, ensures that the most vulnerable have greater access to the support they need. You know, we again sometimes uh, have, have a tendency to live in our own world and, mm -hmm. and maybe, and I'm talking about myself at this point, um, but there are others who struggle yeah. as, as farmers and ranchers and uh, those with disabilities. Uh, is that important to you? It is. So this is a priority for me. Seventy percent of those with disabilities uh, are unemployed. Uh, the agriculture community, of course, has family members with disabilities, and, and there are those with disabilities that want to enter into agriculture. Uh, we have a provision already in the uh, in farm policy, agra ability. Uh, we wrote a provision to expand the capacity of that program to ensure more families with individuals with intellectual, physical, and developmental disabilities can access support necessary to enter in or sustain themselves in the agriculture industry and farming. Uh, and it's really important. And in rural communities like the ones I represent, you know, we have families of all kinds, and we want to be sure that uh, we're supporting uh, farmers uh, as they struggle along, as they thrive and, sur and survive, and hopefully support those. Uh, living with disabilities stay in, enter, or remain a part of the agriculture community. I think last year when we had the chance to, to sit here and visit, um, I just asked you kind of a, a crystal ball type yeah. question and, and just what keeps you encouraged and what keeps you going because it's real easy to sit back and let the obstacles keep us from yeah. moving forward. When you look, maybe not into the crystal ball, but what, what are you encouraged about? Yeah, so every time I go home, uh, someone uh, brings uh, their concern to me, uh, their question, their complaint, and sometimes their compliments. Uh, that's what uh, that's what this is about. You know, we're representatives of uh, the people we serve, and so those families, those small business owners, those farmers that I represent, they're hopeful that I'm giving them voice. And so, what keeps me engaged and encouraged is that they have trusted me with that voice, and that I've said this to, to anyone who listen. I'll work with anyone who's honest and earnest about solving problems, but I was sent here to give voice to people who too often feel like they're overlooked, not by me. And so that keeps me going. And then I would say when we're here. You know, sadly, um, uh, you know, the, the attention goes to those uh, who are more interested in stirring the pot or making some partisan political point or being ridiculous on television. But there are a good number, overwhelming majority of members, Republicans and Democrats, frankly, who are earnest and honest about doing the work. We may not all agree, but they're honest about doing it. And, um, you know, the Farm Bill should be one of those places that uh, we find that bipartisan uh, uh, support where 
where it's not, as you said, it's not just the differences between party, but also geography and location and region. There is the capacity to, to really bring forward good legislation when we just set aside some of the silliness and focus on those voices and those people and those families who sent us here to get stuff done. So good to see you. Nice to be Thank you for your time. I always enjoy visiting with you. Same here. Thanks very much. From the 19th Congressional District of New York, it's the Honorable Representative Mark Molinaro joining us on today's Agribusiness Report.